Where does magic come from? Look around. You'll find it everywhere. It's there when you're sleeping. And in your first waking moment. There on your way to work. Nurturing new experiences with family and friends. But magic doesn't just happen. Magic is made. Throughout history, it's been born of sweat and toil. Calluses and frustration. A deep curiosity. The need to push ourselves. And then push a little harder. Until finally, a new revelation begins to reveal itself. Or an unexpected eureka appears in an instant. And once it arrives, perseverance takes hold. You rethink, rework, and refine. Try, fail, start again. Only then, after effort is turned inspiration into innovation, are you ready, really ready, to change our lives. Because that's when the magic happens. And it's not hard to recognize. It's there in the glow. It's in a stride. In our ears. In our grasp. Magic. Wherever it comes from, you've conjured it. And once again, magic has made its way here. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president and CEO of the Consumer Technology Association, Gary Shapiro. Thank you and welcome to CES 2019. You know, at this year's CES, one of the very big themes is 5G. What will fifth generation wireless communications mean for consumer technology or indeed the whole tech sector? What will it mean for our economy and for our world? Our featured speaker is uniquely qualified to talk about the 5G future. That's because he was recently named CEO of the first company to deploy 5G in the United States, Verizon. When Hans Vestberg was named Verizon CEO back in August, a lot of people saw that as an affirmation of the company's deep commitment to 5G. Hans had previously been Verizon's chief technology officer and head of global networks, where he was focused on leading the transition from 4G LTE to 5G. As CEO, he'll be in an even better position to accelerate that shift toward faster more powerful networks. This is going to be exciting. I've known for some time that this was going to be one of the highlights of the 2019 CES. Well, let's bring him out now because he's got a lot to show you. Woo! Great to be here. Consumer electronic show and do the thing that I love the most. Talk about 5G. <laughs> Last year, Verizon launched the first 5G network in the world, the 5G home. And there's so much more to come from 5G this year and the years to come. 5G will change. It will change everything. <laughs>
everything we're going to see in the future that's going to be transformed by 5G. The pace of technology change we've seen in the last decades has been fast. The only thing we know for sure, it's even going to be, going to be faster in the future. We're going to see a technology change that is going to transform people, businesses, and society. We're facing multiple challenges on this earth, our daily work life, things around us, uh, climate change, and we're heading into the fourth industrial revolution. When we think about all these challenges, and we think about four, fourth industrial revolution together with 5G, and together with all the new technologies like the acronyms like VR, AR, AI, whatever we can talk about, all that together is really what we're talking about when it comes to the change, the technology change that is ine ine inevitable that we're going to see in the future. For us, all here, all around the cloud, is really to see that we are using this change and shape it in a direction that is actually transforming and doing good. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The 5G, which is the next era of technology advancement. It's going to be built on 5G. But let us go back a little bit in history and think about, we talk about this fourth industrial revolution. And I'm not going to do a history lesson about that. But I think the most important is that in the different industrial revolution, the first one was a steam engine, the second one was electricity, and the third one was the digitization. All of them had a general purpose technology as a base. And then you innovated tremendously on them. The steam uh, engine, of course, the steamboats connecting continents, trade was starting, electricity, yeah. You think about how much that changed. And of course, the digitalization that brought out all the PC computers, the, the internet and all of that. Enormous transformation. The general purpose technology for the fourth industrial revolution is actually the ambiguous sort of connectivity that 5D can bring. And that's what I see as the huge opportunity for all of us and for our society to use in the next era of technology transformation. So what is 5G? 5G is a promise of so much more than we've ever seen of any wireless technology. From the beginning, you know, we had the 1G, the 2G, the 3G, and the 4G. They were sort of leaps of differences when it comes to speed and throughput. When we think about 5G, we think about 10 gigabits per second per throughput. We talk about 10x battery life. We think about thousand times more data volumes in the networks is just radically different. I would say it's a quantum leap compared to 4G. And that's what we're going to talk about here today. I mean, we have already do, do, done some real sort of type of examples. We had the Indianapolis 500 driver that has blacked out windows driving extremely fast with 5G. The latency was so low, so we could actually drive it. Those type of things requires innovation. And innovation requires a lot of different people and constituencies working with that. When I think about technology, I also think a lot about what, how that can do good for our society. We're entering an era of more challenging uh, things around the world. And the technology is one of the most important things when we can transform and make it sustainable. At Verizon, we call that human ability. We have coined that word because we think about the human in the middle of technology to do right. I just want to show you a little bit what we mean by human ability. The turning points in human history have all been about things. The Industrial Revolution was about machines. The Space Age was about science and rockets. The information age was about computers and data. But now, we are entering the age of humans. Truly, magnificently, utterly powered by people. Where people would be able to do anything they dream of. Children learning of atoms by seeing inside atoms. Doctors performing surgeries from miles away. The ability to see the invisible. To play, to learn, to live, 
to work the way one only dreamt of. Because with 5G Ultra Wideband, technology is no longer about what technology can do, but about what people can do with it. So, thank you. So when I think about 5G, one of the big differences when the design started with 5G, it was thought about giving new type of solution for the industries, and not only industries, for society. Ultimately, consumers will have it. As I said, the capabilities of earlier uh, versions of wireless technology usually have speed and throughput as the, as the different capabilities. We have eight capabilities in 5G. I call them currencies, the five currencies. And the, cur uh, the eight currencies. And the eight currencies in 5G, they are sort of, you can do a service on them, you can monetize on them, you can build on them. Very different from any previous wireless technology. There's the peak rate, of course, there's a throughput, mobile data volumes, but it's also the mobility, which I will talk about. It's also con how many connected devices you can have. Uh, energy efficiency to continue with service deployment and of course reliability and the latency. So it's eight currencies that 5G can give to the user. If it's a device or it's a person or an industry, that depends on how we're going to innovate on that. Important is of course that we have already started a journey. Verizon started years ago to start building a network because you need a lot of fiber, you need a a lot of dense, dense networks to build these eight currencies. You need real estate to do mobile edge compute. Not only that, you need spectrum. And in some cases, you need millimeter wave spectrum that is giving an enormous throughput and bandwidth. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And what I'm excited about is, of course, what innovation can we do on these currencies? So let's start talking about the first currencies that we have here. And uh, I will talk about the peak rates uh, and, the, and the throughput. And of course, they are extremely important when it comes to doing things with speed. And the first thing that you will come to your mind, how quickly can you download a, a movie on 5G? Of course, we do today on 4G, it takes you three to four minutes with a 90 minute video or movie. It's gonna take you 10 seconds when you have ultra wideband. So that's a use case. But that's to limit yourself what you can do with it, because there's so much more you can do when you have that type of speed and throughput that it's, it's a quantum leap compared to what we have today. I have asked two iconic American companies to talk about how they can use it and how they view 5G. Very different from thinking about that you can download quicker, because this is how we need to challenge ourselves to use these currencies to actually create something very new and transformative in the world we live in today. So the first iconic American company we have is the New York Times. And I have the pleasure of inviting to the stage Mark Thompson, the CEO of New York Times. Mark, please come up on stage. <laughs> hey, Mark. Good to see you. you. Yeah, exciting Good. to talk about 5G. I am. We're, we're, we're now going to move from uh, Swedish English to British English without latency. Uh, um, <laughs> <It's a> seamless <laughs> translation. <laughs> so Hans, thank you uh, uh, for inviting me to, to join you up here to talk about our share plans for 5G this year. Now, pretty much every company nowadays claims they're in the, in the business of storytelling. But in the case of the New York Times, it's actually true. Um, the Times exists to tell stories, to tell the stories the world wants and needs to hear. Once, as you all know, we did it just with paper and ink. But today we try and use every new digital advance, every new display, new device, new piece of functionality to bring our stories to life. Which is why we pioneer the use of VR, AR, and smartphone infographics for serious journalism. From the New York Times, I'm Michael Barbaro. This is The Daily. And yes, it's why we launched The Daily, which now brings Times journalism to more than 8 million listeners a month, nearly half under 30. It was Apple's most downloaded podcast in 2018. It's why we're about to launch our first major TV show, The Weekly, on cable and OTT. 
And it's also why we're so excited about the storytelling potential of 5G and about the collaboration we're announcing today between The Times and Verizon. This January, with Verizon's support, we're launching a new journalism 5G lab at The Times. Now, this lab's going to be based in our main newsroom, and it'll work very closely with Times journalists in New York City, across America, and around the world. It'll partner with Verizon's Open Innovation Group and get early access to 5G technology and equipment. And we'll use those resources to experiment not just in lab conditions, but in the field with real reporters and live news. We believe that the speed and lack of latency of 5G can spark a revolution in digital journalism in two ways. First, by transforming the way our journalists gather the news, allowing them to capture richer, more immersive media, and to deliver their stories with much greater immediacy. And second, by bringing that richer, more immediate journalism to audiences instantaneously and in the form that they want and need it. Previous revolutions in mobile networks and devices have led to many unexpected, sometimes counterintuitive breakthroughs, and 5G will be no exception. That's why the Times and Verizon have opted for the lab and the path of experimentation. So in a way, the full fruits of this collaboration are going to have to wait for next year's CES. But let me give you a flavor of what we hope to achieve using some stories we published this past fall in the 4G era. With this piece showing the aftermath of the wildfires in California, you can see how we already strive to weave text, aerial and ground photo, video and AR together to put the user into the heart of the story. 5G should enable us to take this kind of multimedia storytelling to the next level. And remember that while this piece took many, many hours of painstaking graphics production in New York, we're aiming to deliver incredibly rich 5G journalism from the field as the news happens. So that's the first game we're hoping to make, immediacy. Fast reactions are critical in classical breaking news scenarios, but speed is important to pretty much every story and opinion piece we publish. Now, 5G should also enable us to bring rich multimedia to many more of our stories. More photos, more graphics, more video, more AR and VR, more sound, and more innovation within each of those media. The best journalism has always tried to give the reader the sensation of witnessing the news themselves, of being as close to the story as the reporter. 5G should bring that ambition a big step closer to reality. The lab will also combine 5G technology with machine learning to optimize story order and the expression of the stories themselves to match the preferences and needs of individual end users. Location, time of day, mood state and prior consumption can all be used to make the experience more relevant and valuable, potentially with much of this personal data remaining securely on the user's device rather than disappearing who knows where. Times users tell us they never want us to hand over ultimate editorial choices to machines, but we recognize that 5G devices will be the most personal devices ever created. This new lab and our new partnership with Verizon should enable us to discover how to harness the personal power of 5G for news. And finally, once widely adopted, 5G should also transform the potential for citizen journalism and the crowdsourced reporting of news. The new lab will help us to unlock that potential and to solve the challenges of verification and authenticity that have dogged user-generated content in the past. So as you can hear, we believe we're at the start of something really big, the next chapter in the story of quality digital news. And as we set out on this new journalistic adventure, I can't think of any company we'd rather be partnering with than Verizon. So thank you, Hans, for the chance to join you up here on stage today, and thanks to all of you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. This is the type of thinking we need in 5G when we bring out this currency. We need to think different than how we use them. Because, so we are really innovating and using it for the technology and for the good. I promise you two iconic American companies here. The second one I'm going to introduce is the Walt Disney Studios. The CTO, Jamie Voris, will be here explaining a little bit how they're going to use 5G. Jamie, please come on stage. <laughs> Woo! Hi, everybody. 
Uh, you know, it's really an honor to be here today representing the Walt Disney Studios and our iconic family of brands, Disney, Marvel, Pixar, and Lucas, because we have this really extraordinary history of innovation in our studio. From 1937, when Walt and his team created the multiplane camera, which for the first time uh, made the illusion of three-dimensional reality in an animated film for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, to 1977, when Lucasfilm pioneered the use of motion control cameras for Star Wars, to 1995, when Pixar forever changed our industry with the release of Toy Story, the world's first feature-length computer-animated film, all the way through to last year's Avengers Infinity War, when our Disney Studios research team used their Medusa facial capture technology to help create Thanos, a villain so iconic and so realistic that the Academy just granted them a Technical Achievement Award this year for their work. As CTO, the best part of my job is working with our creative and technical teams to identify emerging trends and understand how they might impact our ability to make, market, and distribute our films. It's really about giving our filmmakers early access to innovation so they can continue to bring unparalleled experiences to audiences around the world. From mixed reality to real-time graphic engines, AI and ML to fifth-generation mobile networks, we believe that technology has the potential to fundamentally change everything about how entertainment media is created and consumed. As a result, a few months ago, we launched a new innovation center and program called Studio Lab. Housed on the historic Disney Studios lot in Burbank, Studio Lab is our hub for development of the next generation of film and, and content technologies. Um, our board of directors is the creative and technical heads of all of our production studios, which, just think about that for a second, the best filmmakers and technologists from Walt Disney Pictures, Walt Disney Animation Studios, Marvel Studios, Pixar, and Lucasfilm, along with our partners at ILM, XLab, and Disney Research, all coming together to make the impossible possible. In just six months, Studio Lab has hosted more than 2,000 industry executives and creatives, and we currently have more than 25 active projects in our innovation pipeline. Everything from uh, increasing the speed at which our animated films are rendered, to improving the way we handle complex data sets for visual effects shots, to developing software so our location scouts can use drones to find the best places to shoot our films. Studio Lab is a big swing for us, and I think one that really uh, uh, un speaks to Disney's commitment to technology and innovation. That said, a huge part of our Studio Lab strategy is to work with world-class partners, because we recognize that we can't do all of this on our own, and as good as we are at storytelling, we're definitely not telecommunications experts, and that's why we look to the leaders in the space, and I'm very proud to announce, you may have seen this morning, that Verizon has joined Studio Lab as a core innovation partner. Thank you. 5G is going to change a lot about our business. Everything from how we connect to our production facilities around the world to how we deliver our movies to cinemas. And that's why we're so excited to have the opportunity to work with the leader in wireless telecommunications technology and services to make it happen. Our teams have already started working together on a joint innovation platform that includes amazing projects like 5G-enabled cloud-based production workflows, connectivity for digital movie posters and standees, and live volumetric performance capture and streaming of our animated characters to cinemas. 5G is going to be huge, and we're so excited to be able to work with Verizon to create the future. So hopefully you'll all come back and see us next year when we can talk about all the great things that we've created together. So, Thanks, Hans, and uh, thanks, everybody, at Verizon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just great to have two of these partners rethinking how you can use the speed and the throughput. And I talked about speeds come up to 10 gigabits per second. Throughputs probably 1,000 times more than we have today. So I'm, I'm excited over those two currencies. There are other currencies. So if we continue with the with the two other currencies, mobility and connected devices. So mobility, or mobile connections, that's actually how it's measured in speed. In the 4G network today, you can basically capture a radio signal up to 350 kilometers per hour. In 5G, 
is roughly 500 kilometers per hour. So why does that matter? Yeah, think about high-speed trains. Think about things that's going to move extremely fast in the future, that's going to be in e efficient transportation. Then you can capture that in the 5D network as well. When it comes to IoT and connected devices, one of the limitations of, of wireless technologies today is that you can roughly connect uh, 100,000 devices per square kilometers in 4G. In 5G, you can do 1 million. And suddenly you can have massive IoT in order to transform businesses, industries, or behaviors where we actually need to address challenges that we have today. So these two currencies also are very different and also, of course, addressing different business cases. One way to show this is to invite uh, a partner or a a company in our family of Verizon, which is Skyward. And I would like to bring on the stage Mariah Scott, which is not only the president, she's also a commercial drone pilot. So Mariah, please come up on stage. Thank you. I'm so excited to talk about drones. At Skyward, we live and breathe drones every day helping our customers accomplish critical new tasks at the same time that we're engineering the future, a future in which aerial robots will be essential to our urban and our rural infrastructure. Now, before I geek out on this, I should point out that when Skyward was founded, it was illegal to fly commercial drones in the US. Now, Founding a company based on an illegal business model might not seem like a great idea, but in 2016, the FAA legalized drones for commercial use, and today there are over 1 million federally registered drones in the US and over 100,000 licensed commercial drone pilots, including me. So here we are, and this is how our customers are using drones to change the way they do business today. Florida Power and Light, a utility company for power restoration, Brassfield and Gorey in construction, Stantec in engineering services like surveying and PBS engineering, and in telecommunications with Verizon, where we use drones to inspect our own network infrastructure and to conduct R&D. Together with companies like Raycom and NBC in media and SunPower in energy, these customers are truly leading the way. Today, only 10% of major enterprises have dr a drone program, and none of them are connected to a wireless network. We knew early on that connectivity would be critical for drones to truly transform our world. And now, 5G ultra-wideband will usher in a new era in aviation where we connect and integrate drones into the national airspace. Today, I'm announcing Verizon's commitment to be the first to connect one million drone flights to the 5G network, allowing drones to become a key part of how companies reimagine their business in a 5G world. We've already started testing connected drones on 5G on the Verizon network, but more about that later. First, I'd like to show you how one of our customers, Southern Company, is using drones today to reimagine their business. Southern is a utility in the southeastern United States, serving over 9 million customers and over 27,000 miles of distribution lines. That's a few thousand more miles than the circumference of the Earth. Drones help Southern maintain all that infrastructure, much faster and for much less money than a helicopter or a manual inspection. Drones can safely go places that people can't. And with a thermal imaging sensor, they can also see things that we can't, like an overloaded circuit, to prevent issues. Let's take a look. In the early 1900s was the first time an airplane flew. Within 60 years, we were on the moon. That level of innovation and uh, it, it exists today in the UAS world. Unmanned aviation for a, a utility company that has a lot of infrastructure like ours is very, very important. 
Southern Company today, we have about 83 aircraft and about 60 pilots trained. An unmanned system in there that takes the human out of it really enhances safety and efficiency. You can't place a price on a life. If we can keep one person alive with the UAS, it makes it all worth it. We are in the southeast, so we deal with a lot of hurricanes, which are large-scale events. We'll pull teams together, and that is from the top down. We are just scratched the surface of the benefit of the technology. Being able to track our UAS operations and gather data from that UAS operation and be able to communicate that data was a critical need that we knew we had. Having this data is also going to be very important when we move to an environment when there is beyond visual line of sight capability. That is the future, I think, and that's where a 5G future is really going to make a difference in the UAS space. Beyond visual line of sight would allow us to pre-position aircraft, launch the aircraft as soon as it's safe, to be able to press a button and have the aircraft launch and then fly and patrol the line. How do we take unmanned traffic management and move it forward? How do you build the infrastructure to get the command and control with low enough latency that will be FAA certifiable? This technology is going to really change the world. We're working with Verizon and Skyward to obtain a beyond visual line of sight waiver to begin testing beyond visual line of sight aircraft. The future of U.S. operations, we believe, involves a 5G connected aircraft that we can command and control from anywhere in the world and allow safe operations. I love working with our customers. They do such amazing things. Skyward helps companies today with automated flight planning and real-time access to airspace. But as you saw in the video, Corey still has to be on site to fly, and the whole operation is still manual. Not for long. 5G will transform the way Corey uses drones. That's because 5G offers low latency, high bandwidth, and security, the foundational elements required for autonomous flights. When drone flights are connected to the Verizon network, we will have digital access to the physical world at scale. Corey will be able to deploy hundreds or even thousands of drones to inspect Southern's 27,000 miles of transmission lines and receive real-time reports as often as necessary. And I bet we can get a glimpse of that 5G future right now. Hans, would you mind coming back out here for a minute? Yeah, I'm on my way. Hey, I'm back. Let's conduct a test flight from right here in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. I have a remote pilot, a remote crew standing by in Los Angeles. And Hans, you have the controls to the aircraft right here on this iPad. Okay. Are you ready to fly the drone? No, but yes. <laughs> All right, go ahead and press the launch button. And where are we flying? We are flying in Los Angeles. We're going to be testing 5G performance. Perfect. I push there. Push the launch button. Now, I should point out, we are actually flying an aircraft, but don't worry. I'm a licensed pilot. I can safely supervise Hans. I'm supervised. And make sure that he pressed the button. You can see our remote pilot in command, Tariq Rashid, is on the ground in Los Angeles. He's been testing 5G performance over the last month, and we are thrilled with the throughput that we are seeing. You can see the speed test. We're getting over 900 megabits per second. It's amazing throughput. Woo. Now, that's good. It's good. Yeah. It's the ultra wideband. Yeah. Under current regulations, Tariq is in control of the operation, but you can see that he's not flying the drone. Using Skyward, we programmed the route that we wanted to fly, and Hans, you flew the drone. Oh, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> when the drone finishes its flight plan, it will land itself. Yeah. Thanks for your help. Let Thank me you. know the next time you want to fly. Thank I'll you set much. you up. Great, Mariah. Thank you. While the drone finishes its flight plan, I can talk about what's really interesting with 5G and drones. Now, it's cool to fly a drone in Los Angeles from a stage in Vegas, but the ability to gather data and analyze it in real time is what will really change the way business gets done. This is the promise of 5G. 
Today, our partners are already providing valuable analytics. Uh, and with 5G, we'll be able to do this instantly. You see here, Unleash Live, applying artificial intelligence to drone imagery for damage assessment after a fire, for traffic flow analysis, and for people flow analysis, and for speed tracking and visualizing data trends. And with our partner Drone Deploy, we can see how construction companies use drones to create accurate, high-resolution maps, reports, and 3D models for analysis, including thermal mapping and 3D volumetric analysis. 5G connected drones will be able to deliver these business insights back to the office in real time. But it won't stop there. With 5G, managing the airspace will look a lot like managing the network. We will deliver aviation-grade connectivity and fleet management services that allow our customers to safely and efficiently manage flying sensors on the edge of the network. More than flying sensors, these aerial robots will also transport us to work and ship cargo and vital supplies to remote locations as well as to our doorsteps. What would your life look like if you could take to the sky and never be stuck in traffic again? At Verizon, <laughs> at Verizon and Skyward, we're building the infrastructure and services that will unlock these new opportunities for innovation that we're just beginning to dream of. Verizon's investment in 5G makes it possible to take to the sky with that same network intelligence we trust on the ground connecting us to each other, and transforming the way we see the world. You can learn more and join us at flywithskyward.com. Thank you. Thank you, Mariah. Uh, thank you very much. So we heard about how the connectivity uh, sort of and the mo mobile uh, speeds are important. Let me now continue with two other uh, currencies or capabilities, what everyone says. Service deployment and energy efficiency. Service deployment is a little bit hard to explain, but what it's really be, is about is have a flexible service deployment where you can match a software with a specific customer need. Think about uh, uh, you want to do a virtual classroom between five different cities and you want them to have the same software. Today on a 4G network, that would take me probably weeks up to months. The promise of 5G that can go down to minutes, maybe to max hours, where we can spin a new service based on a software demand from a customer. Enormous changes. And again, we just need to think, how can we innovate on that? The other is, of course, energy efficiency. And here, you can say that the world is, of course, facing the challenges of climate change and everything. And our industry, of course, needs to think about all the equipment we're using. Everything we're using is actually should improve how much CO2 emission we're doing. There's a lot of things coming out in telematics, smart cities and all that has already started. IoT, we just need to continue. And we need to do that collectively. 5G is, is promising to reduce up to 90% of, of, the, of the power usage that we have today, which is enormously much. And that's why this becomes even more important, how we can address some of the bigger challenges like climate change, etc., by using the technology. And of course, making the fourth industrial revolution a positive change. To be honest, the first and the second industrial revolution, they used a lot of CO2 emission because there were the, uh, the steam engines, the electricity and all of that. So here we have a chance to get there to, to actually empower and uniquely address those two as well. So that's the fifth and the sixth currency we have. If we then continue uh, with the last two currencies, latency and reliability. So on the latency side, today in the mobile networks, we can, at the best 4G network in the world, sort of the Verizons, you get to 100 milliseconds to 50 milliseconds. In 5G, we should come down to very low, like 10 milliseconds. Why is that important? Everything real time on VR, AR needs to come down below 20 milliseconds in order not to create nausea and actually delays. And there are so many other use cases you can do, for, do it as well. 
but I was thinking of inviting somebody that actually have an industrial use case for it, and that would be the health industry. And I'm very happy to invite to stage Mr. or Dr. Chris Morley, which is a co-founder of Medivis, that's going to talk about 5D and what they are doing with it. So please welcome Chris on the stage. <laughs> welcome, Chris. Take it away. Healthcare, when you think about it, is really about connectivity. We have the basic human connectivity that exists between the patient and the caregiver, the healer and the healed. That's as old as recorded human history, and probably much older than that. But there's another form of connectivity that's woven into the fabric of modern healthcare. That's the connection between a caregiver and the body of information needed to provide excellent and personalized care. That trove of healthcare data is unimaginably vast, constantly changing, yet absolutely vital to the delivery of effective care. For much of human history, this knowledge was passed down by oral tradition. Eventually, it was recorded on scrolls and in books and in medical journals. In recent decades, of course, we've been storing this information digitally, adapting our technologies to radically improve our access to health information. So when you get down to it, the practice of medicine depends on how we handle these two forms of connectivity, our human connection with the patient and our cognitive connection to the data we need to do our absolute best for everyone we care for. I am here to talk with you about a truly novel way in which 5G and augmented reality are poised to make a valuable contribution on both these levels of healthcare connectivity. My name is Christopher Morley. I'm a physician, specifically a radiologist. My clinical responsibilities cover the full stack of medical imaging, MRI physics to diagnostic interpretations to image-guided procedures. I chose radiology because of its pervasive influence on patient care across every other subspecialty in medicine. I love the beauty of the data. I have great respect for the subtleties that exist, and that when appreciated with an exceptionally skilled eye can genuinely save your life. It happens every single day. Those are the stories we like to tell. But of course, medicine and surgery remain the youngest sciences. They consistently humble even the most competent practitioners. Over the years, I've witnessed innumerable failures and misfires. Some of these were due to human error, my own included. Others were the results of systemic shortcomings, some of which were ultimately devastating. Most of these were absolutely preventable. These are the stories that should be told. 5G is an open invitation not simply change how we do certain things, but to fundamentally rethink how to do all of it. This includes the connection between patient and caregiver. While some new technologies are pushing patients and pro providers further apart, 5G represents an enormous coming together. And in healthcare, bringing pieces together, making things simpler, is one and the same with making them safer. The truth is that many routine procedures done at the bedside and in the operating room are performed the same way they were three decades ago, blindly. Take this case as an example. Among the most commonly performed neurosurgical procedures is the freehand ventriculostomy to decrease intracranial pressure. This procedure involves placing a catheter through the skin and skull and into the cerebral ventricles at the center of the brain. The standard approach for determining the placement and trajectory of this catheter is by eyeballing a few facial, facial landmarks and going for it. There's no consideration for the immense variation among individual patients as to the precise location of certain vessels and structures beneath the brain or inside the brain itself. Unsurprisingly, this results in a 40% catheter misplacement rate and a 20% major complication rate. Here, you can see an example of what happens when we don't get things exactly right. This hyperdense material represents excess bleeding immediately following the catheter placement. This kind of error rate is completely unacceptable. And it's just a microcosm of how inexact this entire science still is. The way we perform many of these invasive procedures and the burden of illness associated with doing them has remained unchanged for decades. With seemingly insoluble problems like this, we should always take a step back and start asking different questions. In this case, we can ask, why are so many procedures still performed so blindly? Especially when nearly all patients undergoing invasive procedures have a detailed map of their personal anatomy just sitting latently in the computer in the form of CT or MRI scan. Unfortunately, as it turns out, 
Given the size and setup required to use traditional surgical navigation systems, this preoperative imaging is rarely utilized to its full potential. And until recently, these data sets have been trapped within flat 2D monitors, static 3D printed molds, or restrictive virtual reality headsets. As a result, the entire profession has been falling short on both these levels of healthcare connectivity. In many cases, the practitioner must actually face away from his or her patient towards a screen rather than towards the human being that professional is taking care for. This is a fundamental and very common impairment of the ancient bond between patient and healer. It's also hindering our cognitive connectivity when we're unable to turn patient data into actionable insights at the point of care when it's needed most. About two years ago, I co-founded a medical technology company named Medivis, along with one of my neurosurgical colleagues, Osama Chowdhury, who I met while finishing residency in New York City. The mission of our company is to leverage emerging technologies, principally augmented reality, computer vision, and machine learning, to bring fuller connectivity to the practice of medicine by advancing this idea of portable, easy-to-use surgical navigation. The goal is to bring these technologies together to unfold complexity and reduce uncertainty in surgery. We do this by rethinking how medical imaging can be best utilized throughout all action stages of the surgical decision-making process. Let me show you what I mean. These videos are real, recorded directly through the HoloLens display in real time. This clip shows three consecutive brain tumor removal, removal cases. This enhancing lesion is a recurring glioma, a kind of tumor that occurs in the brain and spinal cord. Tools like this allow surgeons to precisely plan where to make an incision and determine how big the craniotomy or hole in the skull needs to be. This way, we can see all the vessels and landmarks we need to be mindful of. Tools like this close the literal and figurative gaps that have always persisted in our efforts to maximize the full potential of medical imaging data in surgical settings. They remove assumptions and allow us to be far more deliberate and confident in every decision we make. Now we can go even further by layering on machine learning and directly interfacing with medical devices. The exciting part about all of this is that it's just beginning. The potential of 5G connectivity and augmented reality throughout healthcare is truly limitless. It will enable immersive collaboration between doctors and patients, both face-to-face -face and in remote locations. It will fundamentally transform how we train our students, the future caregivers. It will raise the bar of the entire profession, making it far more integrated and personalized. Innovations like this have been a long time coming. This idea of harnessing mixed reality to transform surgical visualization is not new. Its origins go back to medical journals in the early 1960s, when researchers first started predicting that someday it would be possible to holographically overlay medical imaging data directly onto patients to essentially render them see-through during a procedure. Well, it's taken about 60 years for the technology to catch up to that vision, but we're finally standing at the edge. And this is just an inspiring glimpse at what's possible in a 5G-connected healthcare. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. That touches everyone of us, and we understand why latency and reliability is important in the network when you see that happening, and it's just amazing. And this is, again, coming back to how you can innovate on these type of things, which is just so dramatically different how you can do things in a previous cycle uh, that we have seen on technology cycles. Uh, we have talked a lot about uh, things that are going to happen in the future, uh, but it's also happening quite a lot already right now. And I actually want to call a friend right now to talk to. And uh, I'm calling Houston. See if there's somebody answering in Houston. Uh, hello, Houston. Going to see somebody coming. Hey, Hans. Here. Nice hey. to see you again. No. Nope. Where are you? Ah, hey. I'm here. Hey, with Hans. The... Nice to see you again. Hey, Clayton. How are you doing? I'm here with a couple of doing friends. Doing well, are you? Yeah, I'm here with a couple of friends. We're talking about 5G. I, I thought about talking to you about 5G. Clayton is the first 5G customer in the world. <laughs> Woo! Hey, Clayton. 
So, Clayton got 5G home first in the world in Houston. And, uh, I mean, Clayton, tell us, why did you sign up so early? I mean, tell us the story. Sure. So, you know, I wasn't terribly thrilled with my uh, current internet service and, um, you know, find out, found out that it was going to be available in my neighborhood. And kind of a tech-savvy user, you know, I've got smart home devices and stream just about every video I watch. And then I'm, you know, casual gaming. Um, but also, I work from home, so um, reliability is pretty important to me for my connection because, um, you know, I depend on that, that connection for my livelihood. And so it was really important to me. And, um, you know, after some deliberation and looking at it and what it offered, um, it ended up looking like the best option for me. And so I went ahead and signed up and, you know, lucked out to be the, the first one on 5G. So, <laughs> Yeah, you didn't expect that because I was there the first day when we installed in you. And I was not alone in your home. We saw truckloads of people, no. their journalists, <laughs> the governor was no. there, you know, everyone who came to your home. Uh, I did try to do the installation, but there was other people doing it. I mean, how was the day when you got the installation? It was pretty crazy out there. It, it was a little crazy. So I, I there was a lot of people at my house, and it's not uh, every day that the, uh, the CEO of a large company comes to visit my house with the mayor or anything mm -hmm. else. So um, it was interesting. But uh, <laughs> other, otherwise, the install process went really smooth. And, you know, the technicians really, really went the extra mile to make sure that um, I got everything I needed out of it, and all my devices came back up, and everything was working smooth. And, um, you know, really made sure that it was a great experience and a great install overall, so. And um, how is the experience right now? How is the performance of the 5G home that you now have had for a couple of months at least? Yeah, so it's very fast. I've actually got a um, speed test behind me here that we can, we can run to show you. Okay. Go ahead and get it started. But uh, normally I see 600 to a gigabit. Um, you know, speed-wise, sometimes it's 1.2, 1.3 gigabits per second. I think my high score is, uh, or your high score is, is 1.6 My high score as well. It's second. our high so score. It's, it's pretty fast. It's, it definitely is faster than I thought it would be. So. Okay. So it's pumping up the speed here more. to see what speeds we have. Uh, and how much things you have connected on there? Oh, gosh. I've got security cameras and thermostats and... Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, the smart, you know, lots of smart devices, switches, all Z-Wave, all of that good stuff. So my, yeah, my house is pretty connected, yeah. So you got... Uh, Probably 20 or 30 devices all said and done. You got a fairly low score. You got 690 mega, megabits per second. Yeah. Are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, I think that, that's kind of on the lower end. That's, that's kind of the bottom of the range. At that, but that's about, that's about what you get. So it's plenty. <laughs> certainly exceeds your bandwidth expectations, so... Thank you, Clayton. Thank you for tuning in to talk to my friends here in Las Vegas. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you. Uh, we have been working with 5G for over three, four years, and this was, of course, the first service we launched. That was the 5G Home, where we actually are enabling home connectivity with, through wireless. We're doing it with millimeter wave. Ultimately, we see this as a self-install, bringing it home yourself and actually connecting up. Very different way of thinking, getting a home broadband. And uh, so far, we have launched in four cities. We're going to launch more cities this year, and we're going to come out with new type of equipment to really make this experience to be great. So this is something we believe heavily in, what 5D can do. Uh, but not only that, we already have committed that the first of 2019, we have two smartphones coming up. We have the Motorola Set 3, that is a mod that's going to come in the first half. But we also have a great Samsung phone that has not been revealed yet. It's going to come in the first half as well. So we're going to have things actually start happening already right now. Another thing we can think about why before we round up is, of course, uh, there's a lot of use cases you can think about when you have these eight currencies. When we talk about latency, one thing that for me is important is, is sort of virtual reality, etc. And I actually have some friends in Los Angeles that's going to join us. Uh, and they're going to do some great stuff. It's with our partner in MBA. We're a technology partner of MBA. And uh, you're going to see on the screen here Kyle Kuzma, that you might know is, is pretty good at basketball. Together with uh, our anchor at Yahoo Sports, Jared, Jared Quay. So please, guys, what are you doing over there in Los Angeles? 
Hey, hey. thanks, Hans. What's good, Vegas? Hey. <laughs> Uh, hope you guys are enjoying CES. Bet y'all cruising down the strip and sell driving cars, or maybe that's next year. I'm Jared Quay, host of The Rush on Yahoo Sports. I'm here in L.A. with Los Angeles Lakers forward Kyle Kuzma. What's good with you, Kuz? I'm good. How are you? Good. We're going to show you how good Verizon's 5G network is. You down? I'm for sure. All right, so you're wearing first-person view goggles. The camera on your head is streaming with lightning speed using the power of Verizon's 5G network, then back to your goggles so fast, it looks like you're seeing with your own eyes. It's literally that fast. How do they feel? Feel great. You know, this is, you know, pretty much revolutionary. I feel like I'm looking at you with no goggles on, honestly. Yeah, in the future, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we showed off cool tech like this at last year's All-Star Game and gave VR to the Sacramento King fans to enhance their game experience. Verizon's working with the NBA on hot content and fresh tech like these goggles to bring to the game. But now, we're going to have even more fun with 5G. Because we're about to play popping off, all oh, right? God. It's a hit oh, video boy. series from Yahoo Sports. You down? Oh, for sure. All right, so you have 30 seconds to sink as many buckets as you can. While you do, I'm going to be throwing some rapid-fire questions at you. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, just so you know who you're up against, some of the biggest names in sports and entertainment have competed in our game, so check out the popping off leaderboard. You'll be up there, but remember, you're going to be the first person to compete without your naked eye because you're going to be testing the high-speed, low-latency of 5G technology. So what do we think we're going to end up at? Oh, I think I can definitely get Knoxville. Uh, that seems pretty easy. You, you um, get two, I hope. I'm going to go for at least Shaq. At least Shaq. I think let's, I get Shaq. We can let's, go Shaq. For, let's go to the top, actually. I'm oh. going to go for Reggie. Oh, we're going with the best. All right, well, look, get yourself 5G'd up. The clock won't start until gotcha. you get your first one. So cool. let's go get Reggie. We're going for Reggie, all right? Here we go. Let me get it warm real quick. Oh. All right. Hold on. Oh. There we go. All oh. right, okay. Got to get all the misses out early. There, there we go. go. All right. What is your New Year's resolution? Uh, to, you know, keep a steady diet. All right, that's good. Everybody said that resolution. Oh, yeah, everybody. Who replies to your text faster, LeBron James or Lonzo Ball? Oh, Bron. Bron's fast with his phone, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the best at Fortnite on your team? Uh, Josh Hart, that's the easy one. Okay, so if Josh Hart's the 5G Fortnite oh. player, who on the team is the 2G Fortnite oh, player? Oh, for sure me. I'm not good at all at Fortnite. Wow. Oh, that's Stick bad. to basketball. <laughs> I know my limits. What do you think LeBron's Wi-Fi password is? Uh, something like King Me or something. You know, something along those lines. In all caps. 62. All right, 62. So you have 10 more seconds, all right? So we already beat half the board. Let's try to catch Reggie Miller. Get 10 more seconds in overtime. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, who's the best shooter on the Lakers? Uh, me. Okay, which one of your teammates is on social media the most? Uh, Josh Hart or me. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite tattoo? 86. 86. One Ooh. more round. We can beat Reggie at 118 with the goggles. Okay, this is crazy. <laughs> All right. Which one of your teammates is the best defender? Uh, Josh Hart. I'm okay. saying his name a lot. I don't know why, though. <laughs> Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Uh, go with the Rams. <laughs> L.A. Strong. <laughs> What's the best thing about being a Laker? Big 119. Oh, and we have a new record holder on popping off. And you did that with the power of 5G Ooh. goggles. How did that feel? Um, no, I felt like I just didn't have no goggles on, honestly. It was just so clear, clear to me. So, hey. And that, that, that's what we got. So how soon are we going to see you in a game with these on? When are we going to get who's cam with you <laughs> actually hitting the game winner live? Oh, I mean, with Verizon, you never know. It might be a year or two. You never know. It might happen at the end of the season. Let's get the finals. I don't never know. know. <laughs> see, see all right. Finals. <laughs> <laughs> it was great kicking it with you, Kyle. And actually, we'll be seeing a lot more of you this season because we're excited to announce that Yahoo Sports and the NBA are working together on a new nightly digital first video series. It's called The Bounce. Starting January 21st, you can find it on the Yahoo Sports app. I'm Jared Quay, this is Kyle Kuzma, and this has been Popping Off 5G Style. Hans, don't <laughs> have too much fun much. in Vegas without us, all right? Hey. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with 5G as well, and as you heard, we're going to launch a new NBA uh, sort of sports series called Bounce in the beginning of this year, so it's all great, you know. Uh, so now we've talked quite a lot about the eight currencies, but uh, to be honest, we're going to build a network, we're going to do the platform, but we need innovation from all across the world. So what we're really going to invite you to is to be part of that pioneering. So we are actually launching a challenge uh, to bring the eight currencies to you where you can be part of that. You can go to the verizon.com slash build challenge on 5G and actually be part of it. What we're going to do, we're going to expose to you the eight currencies and you can start innovating. 
We can give you up to one million dollars of seed money if you have a good idea. And you can also work inside our 5D lab where you can sit and work there. We have four 5D labs so far, we're going to have more. So if you really want to start taking part of 5D, then you go to, on to the horizon.com and the 5D build challenge because there where you can start getting exposure of all these currencies that I've talked about and you're going to innovate. That's very important. I invite anyone to be there. And again, it's a great opportunity to be part of pioneering 5G. Whoa! Whoa! So, let me round this up. If you leave this room, hopefully you will remember one thing. 5G is a quantum leap compared to 4G. It has eight different currencies that you can build services on. You can do any discussion, hocus pocus, 5G. The real 5G, how it was designed, is to bring out the eight currencies. We have been building that for years with fiber in the ground to all our base station, densify the network, building real estate so you can do mobile edge compute, and of course, seeing that we have the right spectrum to do it, both the millimeter wave and other spectrum. So this is really what it's all about to build the best 5D network, which we are committed to do, but we need partners in all industries, by consumers, by businesses and society. I would like to thank you very much for listening to my favorite topic today, which is 5G. Thank you very much for being here. We've always been explorers. Pilgrims. Pioneers. Our curiosity urging us forward. Seeking new lands. New ways. New ideas. The promise of new innovations. The infinite frontier before us.